My very first welding job, um, the very first time I was ever paid to do a welding job, it was for my brother's friend who owned a trucking company and I didn't know what I was doing. I was a junior, not even, no, I was a sophomore in high school and he needed me to stick weld some stuff so it was like this really dirty 6013 job and I did a horrible job <laughs> that he paid me but you know it was my first welding job technically um, and then the next place that I worked for real like a real paycheck was actually at a shipyard in Point Pleasant New Jersey uh, I was repairing clam dredges and stuff and yeah that was that was a rough job the middle of dead of winter out on the the Jersey Shore in the freezing cold everything's covered in barnacles and ice It kind of started in high school, obviously. I was always terrified hearing the words AWS. I became a member of the AWS, got my AWS certifications, continued my career, uh, was working mostly in the pipe industry for majority of my career. Um, and then it was kind of just consuming me. I was a single mom at the time. I thought I needed um, a little bit of a change. And I you know, had my daughter and my old welding instructor called me up and he said, hey, do you want to come and run the TIG room here at the school? I said, yeah, sure, whatever. I didn't need a teaching license to do that, so I tried it. Ended up loving it, but needed to make a little bit more money. Ended up going and getting my degree in education. And my welding instructor from high school again, he calls me and says, hey, there's this job down in South Jersey. You should apply. I said, I don't know. It's two hours away. No, -uh, I don't think it's for me. Ended up applying, got the job, and fell in love with teaching. I. I wouldn't change what I did in the teaching world for anything, even though I cried my first paycheck. I was like, what have I done? <laughs> but then I just really got active in my section of the AWS as an instructor because I wanted my students to understand and appreciate what you get out of networking within the AWS at your section level. You're meeting people who are doing the hiring and looking for welders and are welders and you get a chance to meet all of these people and that's not something that most students are going to have the opportunity to do just in sitting in their welding booth at their classroom. So anytime we would have a meeting and these companies would be looking for welders, you know, bring your resume, come out there, shake hands with people, you know, just get your name out there. Um, and just by doing that, um, the section officers started to take notice of what I was doing and they had me go to different national events for the AWS. And I think just over years of me just talking about the need for change within the organization, we need to become uh, more relevant to the welding community and they kind of heard me crying out and then talking about, you know, positive change that needs to happen in an organization that's so awesome, at least awesome to me. And um, yeah, and then they, they asked me out of the blue. I didn't apply. I didn't know this was a real job. They just kind of, you know, approached me and said, hey, would you want to, you know, take over this careers and welding trailer? And I said, heck yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, I really only had uh, inspiration like, like Jessie Combs to look up to. And though she wasn't a, a traditional welder in, in the sense as I feel like I'm a welder, you know, she was more in the fabrication and automotive industry, but that was all we had. And I think it was really important to me to stick with it and prove everybody wrong that was telling me I couldn't do it. I think it was more of a competitive thing within me, wanting to do good and wanting to be the best because you know, coming up through this industry, the first couple of years, nobody took me seriously. Everybody thought I was just there for an EO hire. I wasn't gonna be able to pull my weight. And I couldn't just be okay at anything. I always had to make sure I was like the best at whatever I was trying to do. You know, I ended up proving a lot of people wrong. And now I've had people who turned me down for jobs and basically made me leave there in tears, calling me years later, begging me to come work for them. And that was kind of, you know, kind of when I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing something all right in this in this field. People are finally taking notice. I mean, now women are able to go on their right on their on their phone and be like, wow, that's pretty rad. I think I want to try that and go home and try it. And then, you know, they see another woman trying something else and they want to go and try that. And, you know, young kids, you know, I'm in the shop with my daughter. I got her in the shop at she's about five, six years old, started her with just, you know, little palm sanders, just getting her comfortable with the sounds and what's going on in the shop. and. You know, I hope people look at, at what I'm doing with my daughter, who's now 11, and she can come in the shop, turn on the plasma cutter or a MIG welder, and, and I can be like, hey, go weld that up, and she, and she can do it. 
you know, and I think that's, that's pretty cool. And I, I hope a lot of parents are able to look at what I'm doing with her and go, you know what, if she can do it, you guys can do it, you know.